is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to ATL Day Ones. I am Tanitra Batiste, and why our boy, while our boy Jarvis Davis continues on his fabulous vacation, we have another fabulous guest host in today. So want to introduce you guys, and really don't need an introduction, for the three-time pro bowler, the former Eagle, and those other teams with former Eagle, because that's when I watched him and loved watching his play on the field. But now he's off the field and has been so for a while, holding it down over at 92.9 Game as co-host of the morning show and it is my friend and big brother Hugh Douglas what's happening Hugh what's going on Tanisha how you doing hey I am good good we haven't had a chance to host a podcast together in a minute so I am excited to have you back especially because we've got a super pack show today we've got some breaking news it's gone from five to three to one for a blue chip player but that road may not be coming through Georgia for that player also well, the Braves did the Braves brave again on Wednesday night. And what's it looking like for them Thursday? And of course, D-Day is finally here. That is draft day. NBA draft day is here. So we're going to talk about what that means for the Hawks as far as moving parts, even as it relates to free agency. And finally, for the culture, Hugh and I have a bone to pick on something that has touched both of us and aggravates the mess out of us, but we'll talk about it for the culture. <laughs> first things first, you. I'm just going to go right in and read you some information that you have actually been following closely, uh, especially following the game of college football, seeing what it means to our Georgia dogs here in the state of Georgia, and just looking at first, it was Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Clemson, and Virginia, right? That was <laughs> some, sort of the first round of final finals. Then it came down to Georgia, Alabama, and Texas, right? Yes. And now, blue chip, top prospect, Isidore Newman from New Orleans, coming down the pipeline of the all incomparable Mannings is Arch Manning, and he has made his choice, and he's going to Texas. Austin, here comes Arch. Yeah, you know, when I heard it, I was a little surprised. I always <laughs> thought Georgia was in the front runner especially when you look at the season that Georgia is just coming off of, look at, at the position that Texas is, is in. Mm -hmm. I know Texas Texas coming to the SEC, but yes. they're not the SEC right now. Exactly. And I thought that's what gave Georgia the leg up in this and the fact that Kirby Smart has built a phenomenal program there. Yes. I really thought Georgia was the front runner. Texas is up and coming. But when you talk about being in a position almost immediately to win a championship, I always felt it was Georgia. Obviously, Arch and his family felt something different, mm -hmm. and they decided to go to Texas. Yeah, and it's interesting because we often think about the game of basketball, whether it's college level or pro level, as being that game where the friend picks up the phone and calls the friend and says, hey, man, come and join me on this team, right? But it seems like here one of the strong factors of consideration was maybe Arch following his friend, uh, tight end Will Randall, a three-star prospect out of Isidore Newman in New Orleans, who whom Arch has played with a couple of days ago, he announced his commitment to Texas. So maybe that had a piece in it too. You know what? That was speculated to Nitra. I, I didn't believe it at first because I just felt like I never met Arch Manning, but you know, knowing the, the Mannings, the way that I do played against Eli and Peyton, uh, I just kind of felt that he wanted to make his own mark. And I guess he felt like he could do that at Texas. I just didn't think it, you know, the way that it was presented to us, like he was following somebody. He just didn't seem like he was a follower. Like, right. I, I don't know if that's the case, but it was speculated. Hey, congratulations for him. I mean, no matter where he goes, he's going to be a phenomenal talent, I assume, when you talk about all, this, all the hype that's coming around him. It's going to be a lot of pressure on him, though, to win a championship yes. there because those hook em, hook em horn fans, they're excited. They're through the moon. They're already thinking national championship already. <laughs> 14 playoff. He ain't, even, he ain't even on campus yet. And they're already making plans. Right. And you make such a great point because they have not seen the likes of a quarterback. What's like that since Vince Young? Exactly. That's exactly where I was going yeah, with it. They yeah. single-handedly put a team and a program on his back and brought oh, that, yeah. that program a championship. But, hey, what Steve Sarkeesian might be able to do with him, we'll all be watching and we shall see 
what happens. But yes, Arch Manning, breaking news. He has decided that he is going to take his talents to Texas. Now, Braves, love what they have been able to do in this Giants series, right? And you talk about bringing their talents back to Truist Park after a pretty decent outing on the road. And they're wrapping up this first of two huge series today. But before we talk about what's happening today over at Truist Park in the series finale, man, Hugh, we got to talk about last night where the Braves found themselves down three runs in that ninth inning. And you're wondering to yourself, okay, is this literally going to be a situation where the Braves are going to just you know, not be able to come back. Because again, we're talking about the Braves of this year. And you look at the fact that they were like, what? Oh, and 26 when they were trailing in the eighth inning or later, not when they were tied going into that ninth inning, but just trailing, if you will. And you really are wondering if it's going to be that team or if it's going to be the team that had a walk-off win against the Giants earlier in the series. And that's exactly what we got out of uh, out of the Braves last night. And it was just good to see because it was a combination of things. It was good pitching. Charlie Morton with a good another good bounce back game. It was also Adam Duvall with the walk off single. But like he said, it was William Contreras setting that up and some strong, aggressive base running that we even saw earlier from Marcel Ozuna that was able to get them that 4-3 win. Oh, there's, there's no question about that. You're talking about a resilient baseball team. That's what I yeah. see from this team. You know, I was telling my partner, John Cricket, this morning on the morning show, I was like, after a win like that, after coming back like that, being down for so long, I was kind of wondering, how do you go to sleep after that, Tanitra? <laughs> I mean, because that was exhilarating. That was exciting. You saw these guys after the game. You saw Adam Duvall and everybody giving him hugs and everything. Yeah. And you're asking yourself, because that game ended about, what, 10, 30, 11 o'clock? <sighs> that was, yeah. Turn, then they had to turn right back around and play about noon. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, how are you going to go to sleep after that? But, <laughs> right. you know, and I guess 162 games do that for you. And you just got to get out there and do it again. I, I like the way that they're playing right now. They're a team that, you know, a couple weeks ago, everybody was talking about how they were beating up on tomato cans. <laughs> now they're playing some good teams, and they're, they're showing their resilience. They're showing their grit. And every other cliche is a word that you can use in this situation to show that the Braves are never say quit. Yeah, and you gave me exactly what I was going to ask you, which is, okay, now all the commentary about them playing scrub teams. What can you say when they're playing a team like the Giants? who They're right there with Padres. They're right there with the Dodgers in the NL West vying for that division. And the Braves are coming up on the winning side of it. And you mentioned a word that comes to mind for me, and it's clutch. We're seeing that they're showing that clutch gene again, even with Charlie Morton. He's looking like that old Charlie Morton. You know, he did allow the two runs, but 11 Ks, 11 Ks. And really, it's not just about that game, Hugh. But when you look across the last three starts, you're talking about 32 strikeouts. And we talk all the time about how the Braves started the season with some issues with giving up walks. Only one walk in those three outings and also a sub ERA when at one point this season he was over six with his ERA so once again good to see Charlie looking like Charlie oh Charlie oh no question about that I know it's a little rocky at the beginning of the game especially when you give up a home run out on your yeah. first pitch it's a little rocky but you like the way that he settled down the defense mm-hmm. played well behind him I think that was somewhat the unsung hero last night as well because you look at the the, the Giants pitcher he looked like he was about to pitch a no hitter for a long yes. time so, yes. you know, for that, that defense to play the way that they played last night and help him out and keep it the two runs and allow them to be in position, that was mm-hmm. really, really good. Really, really yeah, good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The one thing you mentioned about the home runs, yes, that is something that Charlie Morton, you know, it's it's going to get better, I believe, because he, of course, has given up those four home runs, those solo shots these last couple of games. But the key point that you made was the fact that he settled in. And once he settled in and the Braves were able to give him what they needed to on defense and just a little bit of offense, they were able to get the win and hopefully get another win so that they can get this series win heading into what we know is the big series with the return of Freddie Freeman and the Dodgers. Freddie Freeman coming back to yeah. Yeah. Yes, Freddie game. Freeman is in. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Something else is interesting and intriguing that you and I are going to talk about when we come back. It is D-Day across the NBA. What is that going to look like for these Atlanta Hawks? So stick around. We'll talk about it on the other side. It's ATL Day 1. We'll see you then.